Well, welcome back to Evan Ecent, and this is the channel about using your engineer's lathe. And today we're going to talk about using ball cutting attachment for your lathe. And actually, I built this one, but before we talk about actual construction, it's worthwhile talking about how they're actually used because this does influence the design. And this design was made so that it could be made without a milling machine. It's all done on the lathe, and I'll do a second video about the actual construction. The device has a spigot on the bottom which uh, goes in the top of the cross slide. You remove the compound slide and put this in place of the compound slide on top of the cross slide. And uh, it's made of three different slices, three layers, three discs, uh, and the tool post mounted on the top. But we'll come back to that later. Of course the first thing the ball turner needed was a ball for its own handle. The whole process starts with creating a cylindrical bar and the length of that piece has to be exactly the same as the diameter of the bar and you'll see why in a minute. The bar is mounted on a piece of threaded shaft as you can see here and the shaft is mounted in a collet here, an E32 collet. I just found that this gives you more room to work around the workpiece than a regular chuck does. However you can use a chuck if necessary and it's important that this of course runs true and for that reason uh, I turned this thread on the lathe so that it's uh, perfectly concentric with the shaft. If you use a die it's likely to come out crooked. Next I set the calipers to the radius of the bar, the radius of the ball that's going to be made, and position the tool exactly that distance from the centre of the surface of the bar as you can see here. And Of course that could be done with a cross slide too. Next we swing the tool in a semicircle around in front of the bar to check that it just touches each end of the bar. But here I find that I've positioned the tool incorrectly, so first I'm going to have to adjust the tool. In my design there are three different ways you can adjust the position of the tip of the tool relative to the center of rotation. In other words, adjusting the radius of the curve. One is to alter the position of the tool post itself, but you'll also need to make sure the tool is touching appropriate on different parts of the work that you're working on, which is what I'm doing now, adjusting the position of the tool. A second method is to move the tool post. You can see here three little black dots across the top disc. They are th uh, holes that are threaded so that you can mount the tool post in any of those positions and thus make large changes to the radius you're producing. And the main way is the movement of the top disc. You can see that top disc is rotating on the one below it and that is the main way for making fine adjustments in the radius of curvature. You can see, actually see in this um, video that the top uh, disc is slightly off center to produce the correct radius. Now that the tool is basically set up we create a semicircle and this is the outline of the sphere we're going to be cutting. The tool has to touch each end of the cylinder you've created perfectly and that way we'll know that the diameter of the semicircle is the same as the diameter of the bar from the way we set it up. During this process you also have to move the carriage along the length of the lathe until such time as the tool will touch each end of the bar perfectly and that ensures that your center of the ball cutting tool uh, is actually aligned with the center of your work. You don't actually have to measure anything, uh, you just uh, make sure it's just touching equally on each end and you're done. I found it best to make light cuts advancing about uh, one or two hundredths of a millimeter or a few thousandths of an inch each time and um, because of that I had the lathe running very fast so you just make fast light cuts like that. Uh, it does tend to cause a little bit of chattering I found but um, I'm not too worried about that when I'm just uh, hogging off some material and later on when I get to the final finishing, cut, uh, finishing cuts I slow it right down and get some very nice finish. Uh, you'll notice that the tool post here is rather bulky and looks as though it's going to hit the uh, back of the work as I turn it around but in fact it doesn't quite hit it because we're cutting material off the bar which uh, allows room for the, for the tool post to get around. However if I had my time over again, in fact I think I will eventually make a new tool post for this where the tool is just mounted directly uh, putting the um, carbide insert directly on top of the tool holder instead of using the um, conventional tool holder I'm using here. And that would make it less bulky and easier to get into the corners. 
the difficulty I had was that the insert is screwed on with a 2.5 millimeter screw which has a pitch of 0.45 millimeters and I didn't have a drill and tap that size to do it so instead I used the tool holder. I could use a triangular cross section for the tool post rather than square and the angle would match the carbide tip. When I was doing the cutting here in this video I found it cut better moving the tool from the pole to the equator of the sphere and the times I was moving the um, cross slide away from the work slightly in order to move the tool around to the pole and then re-advancing the cross slide in order to make the next cut and move the tool towards the equator like this. It took about 45 minutes of turning to get to this point of actually having a little ball and the next job is to polish it. So here we use some emery paper, wet and dry paper and I start with 320 grit and just uh, smooth off the surface. Although I have a really good finish just for the lathe tool actually with the carbide tip and then I finish off with 1200 grit paper. And that's followed by using Brasso, which is a metal brass polish that's available in New Zealand and British countries. I'm not sure whether it's available in America. I made three of these balls, each 30 millimeters in diameter, and was quite pleased with the result. In the next video, I'll talk about how this uh, ball turner was made. Uh, actually, all of these steps are pretty straightforward turning operations. Mm -hmm.